Can you live for too long? Welcome, welcome to Signpost for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter, and we've got gorgeous Kristen Coggan here. Hello, darling. Hello. Okay, now this is a t- this is a bit of a heavy one. Yeah, I like it. You like it? Mm. Okay. Can you live for too long? Uh, now this 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 podcast is inspired by a gorgeous old lady that I spent mm. a bit of time with. She was in her nineties, mm. and she said that her family keeps saying to her, "You know what? I think you'll make it to a hundred. Yeah, and she keeps saying, "Stop saying that. I've I've had my time. I'm I'm okay." Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's just an interesting topic, isn't it? Yes. There's this assumption. Don't get me wrong, hey everyone. Appreciate life, enjoy your life, be healthy, live well. Please don't think I'm minimising life. Mm-hmm. But this concept of live forever or live as long as you can, it's it's not that simple, is it? No. <laughs> Decisive. I've got real thoughts on this. Do share. What are your thoughts when I said, let's talk about this? Can you live too long? Yeah, you can. I've had grandparents that have lived, and I've still got, I've got one grandma left, and she's 96, and mm-hmm. her life's pretty bloody ordinary. Is it? Yeah. And uh, she's got dementia. She's in a home. She's healthy enough. Like, she's not in pain and all the rest of it, but it's... Not quality. Not a life. nice life. And and when my pop died, he was ninety something or other, and he died a quite a painful, lengthy, drawn out, revolting death. And if he had been a dog or a horse on our property, we would have shot him because it would have been an animal welfare issue. So I just don't understand. <laughs> Go farm girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, yeah, everybody, everybody's suffering, and the person's just—it's not so. Like you said, I'm not minimising anything, but yeah. when it gets to that point. Wow, yeah. it's not, it's not great. And before that, you know, he's in the nappies, and before, like, it's just not what it's all about. Mm. Mm. It's it's really about quality of life, isn't it? Length, mm. not length of mm. of life. But it, it is quite fascinating that, um, you know, a lot of people don't probably stop and think about that too too much, and they really do talk about hitting the big one one o o. And um, it's interesting. It's a strange. It's a strange conversation. And it's funny because. My nan, who I was just talking about, who's still yeah. alive. Mm. Um, and, of course, I don't want her to die. And yeah. I'll miss her terribly when Darling. she does. But, yeah. oh, geez, life's not great. But her mother lived to one month of 100. Really? Yes. So I understand what you're saying because everybody was like, oh, God, will she make the 100? Will she make the 100? Who cares? Like, and she didn't. Yeah. And, the, and that, and, you know, and but... Yeah, life wasn't great either for her in the end because everything's failing, everything's not not nice. Like it's it's almost like we're a bit OCD and we just like round numbers. Well, and also you get a certificate from the Queen, so that's you know incentive. Well, the King now, right? Oh yeah, but at the time it was the Queen. But well, yes. what if you don't like the King? You send <laughs> it back. That wouldn't mean anything to no, you. But. No, but I get. I no, hey, I do, I do get it. That that generation probably did really value getting that from the Queen. Mm. But yeah. um. I just think, yeah, it's not – it's terrible. Mm. And if you've had a great life and you've I – don't, I don't know. It's facing mortality. So the thing is none of us think about it or want to think about it. Mm. And when you're growing up, it all seems like that's forever away. Mm. I remember being younger thinking when people died in their 60s, oh, well, they've had a good life. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that, isn't now it? Now that that's like the next phase for me, I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, age is a strange thing, isn't it? It's so relative. It is. Yeah. It's so But, um, yeah, I do think you can live too long. And this old lady, this is a quote. She said, she said, you can live for too long. She said, I've had a good life. I've had my time. Mm. How beautiful is that? Mm. And, you know, in psychology we talk about having a good death. And a good death means exactly that. It's when you say, excellent, cool, you know. Everyone's happy. I... I did a good job. Mm, I'm content. Yep. I'm content. And, um, you know, it's going to be fascinating in the next sort of 30, 40 years when there's there's more. Oh. Well, this is it. Everybody's living longer. Is there yeah. really a point? Like that's yeah, well, that's, that's, that's what I question. You know, Nan's still here at 96 with, there's, like, she's not, there's nothing to live for almost. Um, and I'm pretty sure she sits there and wonders herself what's going on when she has the lucid moments and why am I still here? And um, But that's, you know, scientific and medical advancement, isn't it? She's still here because of 
technology and science. Mm. Mm, absolutely. And, and, you know, I mean, it's one and the same, isn't it? You're wanting to live well and be healthy, which then implies that you're going to live for longer as well. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's and, just... But on the other hand, I've never experienced having um, someone in my family who's uh, got a terminal illness mm. and therefore they're going too early either. Do you know what I mean? So, and, you know, because... So a bit of a From trouble. what I see around that, like people can be dying of cancer, but they just want another month, another two months, another to have some more time with their family. Yeah. So that's something that I've not experienced. So maybe there's another view to mine out well, there. Yeah, I mean, that's when, when you aren't dying from old age mm. and you're dying from something that's really, you know, mm. incredibly sad diagnosis. Mm. And, um, you know, often, often the treatment's incredibly mm. painful and distressing. And um, very, very confronting for the person. Mm. So, yeah, and, and in which case time is, is very precious and mm. you want more of it. But but the, the flip side is I, I have some clients who, uh, you know, they they don't want to extend their life if it means a lot of acute pain. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they say, no, I don't want to go down that chemo path because that's not quality of life for me. It's, it's just prolonging horrendous. the inevitable. Yeah, and then they choose not to have that treatment. And then family get really angry mm. because obviously their grief is all, all filled up in there and they're not the ones that are having to go through the pain and suffering. Mm. And um, the the concept of losing their loved one is brought forward and they're not too happy about it. And it's I think it must be really hard to make that call and to upset your family when ultimately you do have to make the best choice for yourself, mm. don't you? And, mm. and that's a really, really difficult one. And you've got to step back and respect the choice, I think. That would be – you don't have to do anything that I say, but, you know, you've got to respect somebody's choice. <laughs> no, I think you're absolutely wise with that. No question whatsoever. And, um, you know, that comes down to family communication, which is often not good around death. And really. you'd have to have a fair bit of emotional intelligence in everyone to make that all happen smoothly. And mm. Do you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I mean, death is a topic we don't talk about. Mm. So it's the big one. And so when it comes to that point, um, you know, so critical for everyone to just be open and talk about it, but yet it's scary, it's it's taboo. Mm. And so everyone's often in their corners with their own private experience, not really talking about how they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's a courageous thing when people are able to be matter of fact about it and talk through the logistics, what they need, mm. what everyone's needing, you know. But um, yeah, maybe we're going to get better at that socially. I don't know. Mm. I hope so. Mm, I do too. You know, that would lead to more and more good deaths rather than fearful yes. deaths. Because I don't fear death, but I fear the way that I'll die. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. You know, we all want to just grow old and die in our sleep and have mm. pretty good quality of life up until that point, don't yep. we? Yeah. Yeah. But there's no way you can make that happen. No. You can you can do things to um, help it live a life that I don't leave, lead, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Look after yourself and things, but you still don't know, do you? No, no. There's no guarantees. No. So I think next time we talk to an old person... And we say, hey, I think you're going to hit 100. Probably just take a, th- a moment to think whether they want that mm. and to realise it's quality, not quantity, at that end stage of life, which is a really... Yes. Again, we never talk about it, so that's why mm. I love talking about well, it. Well, I blew my Nan's mind at Christmas because I said, Nan, this is your 96th Christmas. Yeah. And she went, what? I said, it's your 96th Christmas. Because we had to remind her again it was Christmas. Oh, yeah. Poor love. But she really got that she'd had 96 Christmases and it blew her mind. It was fabulous. The look on her face was just... <laughs> was she like, go me? Yeah, yeah. And she like she can't remember stuff, but she knows what a present is still. Aww. And to open it. So you, she gets joy out of those things. And so it was just really lovely. And she, yeah. Absolutely love that. So, yeah, that was nice. Wow. One of my... Um, one thing I enjoy is hearing about family members when someone's passing away and hearing about the connection that happens. Mm. And often the person's experience, you know, and um, I think it's a, it can be a very beautiful thing where mm. there's this sense of delivery and, 
you know, often people look like they're looking out and they see something or they see someone or, you know, and the family members feel calmed by watching their loved one passing away. And, mm. you know, so I don't think many people have the opportunity to be exposed to a good death no. and the safe and I think it makes us less scared and that might make us less scared scared of the person passing away in natural and mm. natural time and not wishing for them to hang around no matter what because mm. we don't live in tribes anymore and we're not by someone's bedside as much these days are we that's right that's right so yeah what a topic there you go <laughs> well thank you darling um I um I, if anyone wants to read up on this, there's start reading about good deaths. They're fantastic to read about. I think I might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to catch me online, everyone, KirstenHunterAuthor.com is the website. Lots of free resources there. Facebook and Instagram, Kirsten Hunter Author, and TikTok, Dr. Kirsten Hunter. Thank you, darling. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.